morning, everyone, and a welcome, welcome to Natik in Elk Grove, California, and NatikKarens.com coming to you live on this beautiful Wednesday. Wonderful Wednesday. It's That's Wednesday. where we go. Oh, man, I thought it was Thursday for a second. My, yeah, my days get off really easy. Oh, there's my piece of paper. Sorry. I lost my piece of paper because I left it on the printer. I'm very organized some mornings and other mornings. Not so much. <laughs> human. At least right? it was on the printer, yes, human. Yeah, like we're human. We have issues. Comes with the territory. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't have a grand prize to talk about yet because Danielle, I know you guys heard Danielle mention the other day that she has it at her house. So she will unveil that when she's back on Friday. Um, so today we will just give away a daily prize and then talk about some lovely new cotton yarn that we got in. Um, good morning. So we have for our daily prize, Danielle's Pattern Monsoon on the Lake, which is a lightweight version of Making Circles in the Sky. Um, it is just little two by two cables and rickrack lace, which is just one row is yarn over knit two together. The other is SSK yarn over. Nothing terribly complicated about it. And then we've paired it with a skein of yarn that is 306 yards of a fingering to sport weight. I think it's technically a sport weight because they wrote a little two on the yeah. label, but it's definitely got the gauge that would be appropriate for this pattern. Um, so you have enough to do the small or the medium or maybe a like a six inch wide large instead of an eight inch wide. I'd say you could do it because I'm sure we didn't use the full yardage. Uh, and so how you get entered into the daily drawings is by interacting with the videos. So if you argue with binder clips, there we go. Uh, if you react to the video, in my case, slowly, because this computer is fickle. Um, then you'll get one entry per reaction. If you comment on the video, then you'll get five entries per comment. And if you share with this little arrow to your stories, oh, we're trying to disappear to your friends. Wherever you share, you just have to come back to that day's video and write shared to and where. And then you get 11 entries per share. That all goes into the drawing for the next days, the next days. Yeah. You just combine days and video, the next day's video. And then we add it to this handy dandy comment picker to see who our lucky winner is. So today's winner is based off yesterday's interactions. Oh, oh. is it pronounced Nathalie? I'm not sure if it's Natalie or Natalie because I've never like talked to her over the phone. Type a pronunciation for us, please, so we say your name correct. Or just say pronounce the H or skip the H. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Because I can't read those pronunciation <laughs> so, things. Natalie, we know you are not local, but we would love for you to come visit us. Um, if you do visit us, let us know you have a prize and we'll get it out of the cabinet. If you cannot visit in person, next time you make a purchase, let us know you have a prize in the notes and we will include it in your pretty pink package. Which I think your other package already went out. It did. Ooh, we still have some of these rhinestone pens. I love these. I have one sits by my chair. I use it all the time. I mean, there's no such thing as too many pens for one. There's so. not. I mean, I love pens. Still have some class supply tins and our lovely rainbow markers. Let me get my link here. One orphan chocolate bar. Somebody rescue it. I was all about the orphan skeins yesterday. Oh my gosh. We <laughs> were on, well, you more than me, but on yeah. fire with the silliness yesterday. Yeah. Um, and it was really funny because the one gal said, um, you sound like my mother with the guilt trips. <laughs> like, no, I wasn't trying to guilt. Like well, we were okay. actually <laughs> truly trying the guilt no. trip, but we always have this saying when there's one skein left of a yarn, 
We always say, you don't want to leave an orphan, do you? <laughs> so we're a little silly about single skeins. Can't be helped because we're silly people. It just makes us find a one skein project to do with it. Right? Because they're out there. Everything's out there. True. At this point with the internet, everything's out there. Okay, so we have a brand new cotton yarn that is perfect for all of your summer projects. This is Queensland Collection Coastal Cotton. It is a 100% cotton that is worsted weight, 185 yards per skein. And it has this little, like, fiber certification on here. I'm going to have to look up what that means because I don't actually know what that certification is. But let's find out. Hmm. Because we always want to know what the certification is. While well, she looks that up, it is worsted weight. Mm, did you say the yardage? I can't. Uh, 185, right there. Oh, just out of my vision, 185. Ah, it is an independent testing and certification system that tests for harmful substances in raw materials and finished products at all stages of production. So it basically means that they're not using products that are harmful to the environment to process the yarn. They're not using products that are harmful to dye the yarn. It's all clean, good stuff. Nice. I know muesling is for sheep, but it's um, <laughs> yeah, it's similar the, for cotton. <laughs> it's the no cruelty for the planet. Yeah. Like, no planet cruelty was used in the making of this yarn. Uh, so this yarn is very soft for a cotton yarn. This colorway is color 37 mallow, like a marshmallow. Beautiful blush pink. This is the yarn that I just used to make the crochet washcloth for our upcoming spiraling crochet class. Um, then we have this gorgeous color 1014 apricot, kind of a corally, it's a little more of a pink orange than you would consider like a dreamsicle orange. Yeah. Good a little more coral than that. Yeah, I know we're not going to have room for yeah. all of them on the counter. I'm starting way over here. Then we have, this one's accurate because it reminds me of those little butter mints, 1012 oh, butter. I forgot about those. Yeah, the ones I that melt in things. your mouth yes. and you kind of wish they'd bring you more Dinner than two. Mints. What, isn't that what they're yeah. called? Dinner? I love those things. We always called them butter mints, you know? Yeah, like, that works. But just a beautiful, soft yellow. So you can see. Now, I'm just going to warn it. Well, not warn, but notify, notify <laughs> everyone that there are not only pastels in this yarn. I'm just only starting with the pastels because they have kind of a perfect rainbow. Uh, we have this gorgeous spring green 1013 Celadon. Then more of a mint green 1038 Aquamarine. So you can see we've already pretty much got the first half of the rainbow spelled out right there. Oh, Sandy, it's hard to find butter mints. That makes me sad. I wonder if um, Elizabeth carries them. But you can order them online, too, if yeah. the candy stores don't have it. But there are so many good projects that you can do out of this yarn. Um, I have all, like, small projects featured. Of course, you can do sweaters and stuff like that. But I wanted to feature some things that are good, fun summer projects that aren't going to make you hot by having a big project in your lap. So this one is a pattern that's been around forever. It's literally called the ball band dishcloth because originally it came off of a yarns ball band. You just use two colors. It's just knits, purls, and slip stitches to make this gorgeous like brick pattern. And it only takes, like for a washcloth, it takes 100 yards. So mm -hmm. you could get a few different colors that you like and mix and match and make a whole set that always fun. 
that always goes over like gangbusters with my family for the family reunions. They just think handmade washcloths are mm-hmm. the best. And I love that because then I can make them something I know they will use. Then here's a cute crochet oh, one. That's cute. The wildflower washcloth. Got starts in the middle. This one's crochet, starts in the middle, and then you increase out in a circle, and then you start doing these little corners that are like a chain space to make it more of a hexagon. So two to three colors for that one, depending on if you want a little border at the end. And I like that they show a picture of one on a blocking mat because that gives you an idea of the size because that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten inches from the widest point to widest point on the petals. And that one, again, you get your two colors, make two washcloths, easy. Okay, this one, I love tea towels. I just think they're so fun, and I love the idea of making your own. I always wanted to weave them, but I'm not talented on a loom, so knitting them sounds like that might be a better option. But this one's really fun. You've got this little waffle stitch at the beginning, and then garter stitch, and then you can tell by this picture, waffle stitch again on the other end. That's a great gift idea. And one skein would make one tea towel. And the pattern is $3, or if you go through their little blog website thing, you can get the pattern for free. And who doesn't love free? Because that's more money for yarn. Definitely. Not usually a pastel, but I like this combination together. Right? Very like, pretty. Pastels don't normally speak to me either, but these are just so gorgeous. They're like a bag of candy. Yeah. Dinner this mints. <laughs> is color 1016 Celeste, more of like a pastel turquoise. Then we have this beautiful muted teal, number 1039 Moonstone. Interesting name. I thought moonstones were white. Yeah, and I kind of thought they had a little bit of a pinkish tint versus a blue tint, but maybe there's more than one kind of moonstone, because as True. we discovered yesterday, there's a lot of different kinds of jade. True. Jade plants we were talking yeah. about. Like, I didn't realize that my one that they call Shrek's ear is also a jade. Uh, 1017 powder blue. I have to wonder what they called your plant before the movie Shrek. Right? Like, you know, well, I think something. they it probably didn't have a cute nickname before. <laughs> then we have 1018 Wisteria, which is this beautiful soft lavender. Mine. There's lots of skeins you can <laughs> share. Unless you plan on buying blanket quantity, no, you can share. No. It's pretty, though. Ooh. Our signal went all wonky all of a sudden. Yeah, it's a slow connection on the phone. Weird. Hopefully it fixes itself. Yeah, it looks like it's getting over it. There was probably a cloud. <laughs> all right, and then kind of last but not least for the super light colors, 1003 porcelain, which is the bright white. And I love that it's a bright, like, bleach white, because sometimes yarns only have, like, the natural white. And depending on what you're making, you're like, no, I really want it to be a nice, crisp, clean white. White, white. I got it all in one view there. Oh, Eileen, don't worry. I know, right? There's another (laughs) purple that will also talk to you. All right, let me show you guys a few more projects before I do more colors, because I have lots of colors and lots of projects. I searched forever for this stitch pattern one day for someone. This is that double thick diagonal pot holder. It's really cool because it's like you're making a big pocket and then you just slip stitch the Hmm. seam closed. So even with a cotton, that's plenty of thickness for a pot holder. You can also put a little piece of interfacing in there to add extra 
it, no. Insulation. <laughs> Anna's forgotten how to talk. You can just crochet it to fit an existing pot holder you have that you can just stuff it inside. Oh, yeah, that too. That'd be super duper thick. I got some pot holders looking kind of tired, so yeah. it'd be a good way to refresh them. Make a pot holder cover. Yeah. You could do it with little loops of the button, and then you could take it off for easy washing and stuff, too. I'd just throw the whole thing in there oh, together. Yeah, too. <laughs> Again, not even a whole skein to make it, so you could easily do something fun with. Like, you could get two colors like this, and then make a striped one out of the leftovers of the other two skeins. Oh, that'd be fun. Is it just singles? What? How did they... Yeah, it's just single crochets and increases. Cute. But I love that, because... It just makes it nice and thick and safe for your hands. Oh, that's cute. You know, this one's like almost like a washcloth to go with that tea towel. This is the willow dishcloth. It has this little like broken one by one rib, some seed stitch, and then the broken one by one rib with a slip stitch edging. So it kind of makes it look like I cord. And I like they put like a little loop, like a little leather loop through it to yeah. hang it. But this one's only like a third of a skein, so you could get a set of washcloths out of one skein. I promise everything is not washcloths this morning. This oh. is the last square. This is for people who like all the colors and want to play and want to see if maybe you want to do something like that um, fabulous blanket that's coming up. But you're like, mm, let me see if I'm committed enough to make a whole project. You can just make a square that could be, I mean, this would be a gorgeous trivet. Yeah. How did they do that? Um, that's um, post stitches. I can show you. You work around the stitch instead of in the stitch, and it causes the top to fold over to create that little ridge. But this one's one, two, three, four, five colors. So you could get your five favorites and just play with it. And that one, I mean, total, it takes a little over one skein if you're making it big. So you could totally have fun playing. Okay, there are lots more colors. And I promise I'm done with small squares. I went down a rabbit hole because the small squares are really fun for, like, playing with stitch patterns and learning new things. New color. Exactly. All right, here's a fun, there are a few kind of confetti ones. They call these ones Ocean Mist, but they are all under the same product, so you guys do not have to go hunting all over the place. This is color 3004 Greens Pool. I kind of want to do this so you can see oh, wow. all the colors. There's some raspberry, dark teal, lemon yellow, lime green, charcoal. Highlighter orange. And then, of course, the natural white that all the colors are speckled against. These are the ones that are fun to, like, get for a project and then pair other colors with it for contrasting colors. Then we have a gorgeous, like, marigold Yellow, color 1006, Goldenrod. Marigold, Sunflower, somewhere in there. Happy yellow. Right? Rich, bold, fabulous yellow. Which the next project I have linked for you guys, I totally could see out of that color. So, you know. Save me. Okay. I'll help you pick colors. Okay. I think that's the kind of saving I need. <laughs> help me pick yarn. Then we have color 1025 Malachite, which is this gorgeous emerald green. It's almost Crayola crayon box, like yeah. literally just the one called green. Then if you need a nice deep green, we have 1042 Seaweed. It's like a khaki. This one would go really good with my pants. Look. Yeah, it would. It's almost the same color. Yep. 
I'm weird. Actually, the top you have on would be nice in it. Oh, yes. This is, it was technically a DK weight, but it would work in this yarn perfectly because the gauge is pretty loose gauge. So I'll tell you the details about this pattern, but it would definitely work for this yarn. All right. Here's another one of the mist colors. This is 3001 Shark Island. <laughs> uh, you've got all the pretty like deep water blues and then these speckles of like a rusty brown almost clay kind of color. There's a little kind of pewter gray in there, but it's just this really pretty teal. It kind of reminds me of how when you get like the, um, the old enamel pots when they start to get chips and they get little rust spots on them, it's like an enamel pot. Good morning, boss lady. She's on her way to the last day of the market. Yay! I thought of something a little bit ago that I was like, ooh, we should ask her to look for that, and I didn't write it down, so oh, okay. that was dumb. But no dumb. It was a moment of dumb, not a dumb person, <laughs> you know. Like, oh, why didn't you write it down? It, oh, no. Our uh, screen. Oh, there it is. That was really weird. Our screen went dark for a second there. The Something screen got shut off for like a split second. Okay, this is the one that I'm like, that sunflower this is... yellow, this woodcut blanket. Because you don't always need a heavy blanket. Sometimes you just need something to get the air conditioner off of your skin. So I've made cotton blankets before because I just think it's great for the summer. Because I always want to be under something, even when it's warm out. And this is just knits and pearls that are shifting in a little diagonal line so that it creates this um, like interlocking looking pattern. Oh, they look no, like little it. chevrons or arrows. Like here, look at, you can tell this was like pre-blocking or they kind of pinched it up to make it mm. look more three-dimensional. But that one would take like six to eight skeins depending on how big of a blanket you're doing which really isn't that bad for a blanket i would have the temptation to do every like do this section one color and then another and then another i would do stripe the whole it. entire row is that what you yeah mean? yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah like this yeah. whole line yeah pink and then that whole line orange and then that whole line yellow because out of those pastels that would be really pretty and then we have some really cute bucket hats. This is the lemonade bucket hat. This is a crochet one. It's got this beautiful kind of seed stitch looking texture. Then the ridges. And then the little band with, with you can do it with or without a flower. Like this one has more of like kind of a starfish looking flower. This one doesn't have a flower. And it's still super cute. I like that hat, and you could totally switch out the flowers. Oh, yeah. You could put, like, the little safety pins on the back so that you can just pin it and switch it. Or if you've got other cute brooches that you've got in your jewelry box, you can put those on it. And this one at the extra large adult takes just over one skein. All the rest are only going to take one I love that they have a full range of sizes from newborn because that's just adorable to what they call a 2XL. I was looking to see if they told us circumference without getting the pattern, but they do not. You have to go get the pattern. That's very cute. I wonder if I could get you to make it. Right? It's in the rounds. They like it in the know. rounds. Yeah. So that's the lemonade bucket hat. Then here's a knit one, the sunlit bucket hat. It's really cute, and I'm really, like, because they did this nice thick brim, it actually keeps its shape really nice because this is a folded over brim. I wish there was a picture of underneath that was a little closer up, but it is, like, That's there's fun. a pearl ridge right here at the edge, and it's folded under and then joined right here so that it's double thick, which helps it hold its shape. 
And that one is, again, at the most, just over one skein. Okay, let's look at some more beautiful colors. If I can get this computer to turn. There we go. Uh, okay, going into some pretty deep kind of jewel tone colors, 1035 Oasis. That beautiful deep water teal. These two would be really pretty together. They would. And then we have a gorgeous, like, I'm going to call this more of a French navy because it's very dark, almost in the neutral category. This is 1009 navy. But it's just a really deep, deep blue that, like, next to other blues starts to look more gray, but you bring it in next to a gray and it starts to look more blue. It's right on the edge of not being blue. Then here's another one for you, Eileen. We have this gorgeous deep violet plum color called Concord 1034. Oh, yeah. If you need a two color, there we there's go. the purple and the purple. Can't mess up the rainbow too much. Okay. Don't mess with me. <laughs> I really like this color. It's 1010 cocoa, but doesn't it have the slightest, like, kind of burgundy it leaning does. to it? Like, yeah. Dark chocolate cherry. Yeah. Because you know me, it's all about the food descriptions. And then this one pairs great with it of the speckly ones. This is 3010 Marley Beach. I'm going to that so you can see the whole thing for a minute. You've got cranberry and this kind of pink gray, some charcoal, some cramp brighter cranberry pink red. So it's like Marley Beach and cocoa would be gorgeous together. Eileen, you're funny. <laughs> purple is mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there is enough purple to share. There is enough to go around. We got lots of this fabulous yarn, so you can all make wonderful projects out of it. All right, this is another really fun bucket hat that, you know, oh, I keep mentioning the two colors. Oh, it's back. No, but the cable's got to be yeah. loose or something. Whoops. Oh, yeah, the power cable is coming out of the back. There we go. Now it should stop doing that. Okay. Uh, this is the O Snap Bucket Hat, which is two colors, basket weave look, but it's just single crochets. Nothing crazy. So you carry the white, I mean, you carry the opposite color across each? Yeah, usually what you do is you're crocheting over the oh. color that you're not using. How is the green not showing through the white? Because it's just crocheted that tightly. Because you do wow. on stuff like this tend to crochet it nice and tight so that the other color doesn't show through. But yeah, you just crochet over top of the other one. And then just that like way. You're hiding your tail? Yeah. Okay. And then that way it's still completely um, reversible. That one's mm. cute. That one's blue and pink. That's it's got a, a sully. Yeah. Um, that one takes um, two skeins, one skein of each color. Once upon a Cheerio. That's nice. cute. <laughs> okay, this one. If Whoa. you've never made these or had these, you need one. I tried to find a knit pattern. All the knit patterns were felted. So, mm -hmm. sorry, y'all are going to have to learn to crochet for these or get a crochet friend to make them for you. But soup bowl cozies are the best thing ever. You put it on your bowl before you put it in the microwave, and then you can actually touch the darn thing to get it out. I always put a pot holder under it, but I like this idea. Yeah. It, and that's, uh, cotton's enough to insulate from the mm -hmm. heat? Yeah, and cotton nice. won't get hot itself. Like, don't use acrylic because it's going to sure, melt. Right. And it's going to get hot. But it's bas it's kind of like, it's basically a bucket hat that gets square corners. 
But yeah, they did it in a that. spiral pattern. You can see how it just keeps going and going and going. So that means it's no marker. There's well, no beginning of round. There's no beginning of round, but you still want a marker to mark where so that you know when to switch in crease sequences. Because like, oh, this true. First round's going to be two in every one. And then you're going to start going one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then one, one, two, one, one, two. Okay. So you. I just put a pin in where I'm supposed to finish, basically. And you just keep shifting that out. But I love these things. And they don't take that much yarn. One skein. And if you didn't want the little square corners, you could just finish it off round, right? Yeah, you could just stop at this point instead of adding the square instructions. But the square instructions make it easier to have something that easier to hang on to than if it was just like a hat shape. It kind of needs the corners. Well, Kathy says those work so good. Uh-huh. I need to try one of those. That's my skill level. <laughs> you can do that because it's all single crochets. Nice. One of these fabulous knot bags. This is the Mosu bag. This one is a crochet one. It's that stitch that they call granite stitch, which is just single crochet, chain one, skip one. So you're always single crocheting in the chain space. Very easy. And what makes these bags really cute is you've got one short handle and one long handle. So you can pull the long one through the other one and then throw it on your wrist and off you go. I think sometimes they're called dumpling bags, aren't they? Yeah. Dumpling bags or knot bags. They have lots of different names yeah. for them. But this one, they didn't tell us up at the top how much yarn they, you needed, but I would guess it's one to two skeins. Downloading the pattern would tell us all of the things. Okay, let's show you guys a few more colors. Cause, but wait, there's more. Yes, Carolyn, those bowl cozy things are a great idea. Now, if I could just always remember to put them on the bowl before I microwave it, because then you're sitting there trying to figure out how to get it under a bowl full of hot soup. All right, we've got a beautiful, this one is even more like, are you sure that's blue? This is 1036 Dusk. I'm going to put it next to the navy so you can see. Oh, yeah. It's a little more indigo, like it's got a little bit of like a violet leaning. But it's definitely almost like charcoal blue. Definitely lightened up the other one when you put yeah. it next to it on the camera at least. I knew that would yeah, happen. Yeah, a little bit there. Because I may have played with them before video, so I knew what okay. I was getting myself into. <laughs> um, then we have another beautiful one of the spray technique. This is... 3006 Bridgewater. Look, it's like coral and muted teal and turquoise and a little sage green and peach. This is like shabby chic day at the beach vibes. Right, Kathy? She said, that's when you reach for mm -hmm. the pot holders you made out of this beautiful yarn. Yeah, then you grab two pot holders and pick it up so that you can set it in the bowl cozy. Yes. Because, gosh darn it, you're going to use the bowl cozy. <laughs> I made it. I'm going to use it. All right. Beautiful silver, 1031 mist. Then this really lovely pewter 1002 stone and last but not least this gorgeous charcoal gray 1033 gunmetal totally do such a good ombre with those three very pretty That'd be really fun to do, like those tea towels that I showed, do them in different shades. So oh, they're like yeah. a coordinating set. All right, I've got a couple more patterns. The Tobago bag is these big, like, granny square style crochet hexagons that are seamed together. That it just creates this really cool, like, retro look to it. 
especially in the colors they used. And it's got a little drawstring at the top so you can close it up. Just, it's, it's just a super cute bag. And I love it because it's got the points at the top. You can kind of see, like, look how it just naturally fits around your body. So your bag's not slip sliding all over you. It's the equivalent of three skeins at the most. And so with your one, two, three, four colors, one skein of each. All right, I got one more. The BK22 bag. Because not all your market bags need to be mesh lace. That's cute. It's like little um, fronds of wheat or lavender. Like if you did it in the light purple, you could call it lavender. Mm -hmm. And it's just knit, pearl, yarn overs, knit two togethers, SSKs. It's nothing fancy. And then I love that they like seamed the strap right where those little yeah. pearl columns are. So it looks like it's meant to be there. All right, that is it for the colors and the patterns today. I will give you guys a little hint. If you didn't see a color you're in love with yet, you're going to want to watch us again tomorrow because there was no way I was doing all of the colors of this yarn in one video. So this is only half. There will be more. Lots, lots more here. Let me. Yeah, Try to get them all for one quick little like family portrait situation here. Got it. All in one picture. Oh, um, the knitted bag was BK22. I will list everything in the collective and on YouTube when we are finished here. Oh, don't worry, Doris. Watch tomorrow. There just isn't enough time in one video to do 52 colors. Unless I went really fast. Like, here's navy, yeah. here's speckle, here's silver. Like, we're good, but we're not that good. <laughs> like, takes all the joy out of looking at it because there's no colors. Okay. Let's do a quick rundown of upcoming classes. Come back. Oh, forgot the technology. Oh, you could have grabbed it. <laughs> okay, I didn't think of that. That's your job. I didn't even. Oh, you my know, it's my job okay. when I'm over there, too. <laughs> uh, you're the microphone person. I know. I'm just fearless microphone lady. Yeah. All right. On... Friday, August 4th. That's in two days. How are we in August? What happened? I don't know. Uh, we have the Defying Physics Cowl. This one is just increases and decreases in a really fun ratio that gives it this gorgeous texture with a little increase down the middle to give it that cowboy cowl shape. This one is worsted weight yarn. So if you were making it for someone who's, say, maybe not a big fan of wool or they're hot all the time, but they like wearing cute scarves, you could make it out of the coastal cotton. It would be fabulous. Um, then coming up on Tuesday next week, August 8th, we have the basic broomstick crochet cowl. Like where'd it go? This one is DK weight, but you could bump up the hook size and do it out of worsted weight because it's a cowl. There are like zero rules, really. Uh, and it's a little bit of that granite stitch. There's the broomstick pattern here, which is I can't you, that. I just have it, Siri. <laughs> uh, which is a really easy um, version of the broomstick lace because it doesn't have any of those little twisty things. And there's also a you can't really see it super well, but you can kind of see how it almost looks like an I cord edge on here. That is working through the third loop of the half double crochet. So we'll teach you the third loop, the granite stitch, and the broomstick. And then on Friday, August 11th, we'll do the In a Twist Crochet Washcloth class. This is the one done out of the Coastal Cotton in two colors. This pattern is something that you can keep going as big or as small as you want. So you could stop, you know, about there, and it'd be a coaster. You could keep going and make it a blanket. You, well, you could keep going somewhere in the middle and make it a pillow. Just get one of those pillow mm. forms. That'd be really pretty. Ooh. 
Gotta go by. Um, <laughs> I know. Sit, stay. We'll right, go. right. Good girl. Uh, then uh, last but not least, for now, um, we have the Binding Off Three Ways class coming up on Saturday, August 12th. This one, we're going to teach you the um, sewn bind off, which is also known as Kitchener Stitch. We're going to teach you the Pico bind off and then Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which is great for things that you need to have lots and lots of stretch. There are actually occasions when that one is too stretchy. True. But it has times when it is perfectly useful. Um, Deb, the one that was the beige with the beaded silk is the basic broomstick crochet cowl. I always want to say broomstitch for some reason. We should call it that anyway. Right? Like, it's, just, it's a broomstitch. Yeah. Uh, okay, so on to what are we wearing. I'm wearing a top called Sienna with one in by Erica Knight. Um, it's a really easy bottom-up pattern. She only has you do three rounds of one-by-one one ribbing at the bottom. If I were to do it again, I would do a whole inch because you can see what it does. But I'm not redoing it. I don't know where the leftover yarn is for that matter, so that's the whole other story. Up, so little, yeah, little it's like it could be figured out, but it's not worth it. No. Um, stock in it, knit, 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 and then you change needle sizes to make it look more loose at the top of here. Clever which also helps it be more of a drop shoulder because when you change your gauge that much, it makes the fabric bigger. Just a little shaping on the neckline and a little shaping under the arms, but otherwise knit, either knit in the round or knit a row, purl a row, and that's pretty much the whole top. I'm like, I know I brought mine out. Where did I put it? I don't know. Um, did you not? I was going to wear memories in color. Wear this right here. Because <laughs> Lynn just finished it. We're going to... We got distracted and set a scarf down somewhere. We'll find it later. General rule, whoever's per holding the camera is hot. Don't know why. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. What but am I wearing? <laughs> Lynn just finished this beautiful sample for us. It's our Knitting Shades of Grey scarf out of one ball of Noro Okuna. No. No. Haruito. Yes. Oh, why I had that one stuck in my head. That one's long gone. Yeah. But this is one ball of the Haruito. It's a knit pearl pattern. Very easy to do. And are also lots of pretty colors. Right? There. Now, you know, as soon as we sign off, we're going to find your scarf. Yes. Right in plain sight. It's probably... I mean, usually I put it right there. I know. I thought I'd bring probably. it out too, but, you know, <laughs> clearly we're both hallucinating today. Yeah. Yeah, camera person tends not to wear their scarf until the end because we get hot. I don't know why, but it's a thing. It, holding your arm up like this is hard work. Burning a lot of calories, which makes you warmer. Yeah. We're going with that. Because I try hard, really hard to hold steady, and that right? takes a lot of... It is very hard <laughs> to be a tripod. It is. Very hard. All right, you guys, that's going to be it for today. If you didn't see a color you're in love with yet, be sure to watch us again tomorrow, and we'll show you the rest of the colors. Have a good day.